In this lesson, we're going to go over how to map a network drive using Windows Management Instrumentation. This lesson is going to focus on the following three things. It's going to go over how to map a network drive, how to test for a network drive mapping, and we're going to review a sample script that's going to show us how to do that. So let's go ahead and let's begin. In this quick demonstration, I'm going to show you how to do one of the most common things people want to do with scripting, and that's to map a network drive. This is especially useful for when you want a user to have a specific drive mapped when they log on to the computer. So um, this is the code that we will use to do this. It's pretty simple the way it's currently set up. Not a whole lot to it. There's only three lines of code. This is where we're defining the variable that we're going to use to create the uh, network object that will allow us to map the network drive. Here's the command right here where we call the map network drive function here. This is the drive letter we're going to use and this is the path to the network drive that we're going to connect to. So here is the script. So let me go ahead and here's my current drive set up here. So let me go ahead and map this drive by running the script and then you can see over here this network drive popped up. Now the one problem that we run into is if we run it again we're going to get an error because that drive letter is already in use. We can click OK and it'll go away. A easy way to get rid of that is just to add this line on error resume next click save and now if we run this again we're not going to get that error it's still occurring but we're not going to see the error so it's not the cleanest way of solving that problem so let me show you another way that we can resolve that and that's by getting a little bit more complex with the code so let me copy this and bring this over here so you can kind of see what I'm going to talk about here. Here's a little bit more of the code. Now what I've done here is I've created a couple other variables. One that tests the current mapping. One that looks for the disks that you have connected. The object disk. And I created a variable to put the drive letter in that, we're going, that we want to have mapped. So here we have letter equals, and the drive letter we're going to use is R. So we have this here where we create a couple of uh, Windows management objects. So here's where we create the object, which allows us to start with the connection to look to see what kind of drives that we have connected. And then we have a, which looks a lot like a SQL string right here where we're going to just select anything from Win32 that has a logical disk where the name of the drive is whatever variable we have or whatever value we've given the variable letter so here it's going to look for anything that has the drive letter R and then it's going to look through here and then as it looks through there it's going to apply the drive type it's going to set this here with a current mapping and once it's done going through that it's not going to take long because we only have one drive letter to look for it's going to go here and then we have to create this this is the same line that we used before to create the object to allow us to map network drives but now we have this if statement in here that's going to test for the current mapping so it's going to test for that current mapping that we have specified. So if there is anything mapped to the letter R, it's going to run this line right here, which will remove any network drives that have the letter R. And then it's going to jump out of the if statement. And then once it does that, it's going to run this command, which is going to map our network drive like it did before. So let me go ahead and save this now that I've made these changes. If we go over here and run it, you see it doesn't come up with an error. 
and it's mapping that network drive. In fact, let me go ahead and remove this. And now let's go ahead and run the script again. And there you go, you see it's mapped again. And that's all there is to it. Alright, thanks for watching.